Hey, Hada, what's happening in Melee? Not much, if you ask the alt kids. Uh, we will get to that in just a minute here. But first, <laughs> let's lead off with, first of all, Hada, how are you doing today? Uh, feeling a little bit under the weather, not going to lie to you. Mm. But uh, I decided to, I have not used a sick day since I have been at my new job. So I decided to just, you know, take a day for myself to hang out with the dogs and feel a little bad for myself. And uh, it's been laying around and I'm like, all right, let's, uh, Let's do this whole uh, podcast thing. That sounds pretty fun. <laughs> this is your fever game. This is your 101 game. And I really appreciate <laughs> you doing this anyway because I got back from the museum today that I took my kids to. We were there for almost five hours, and I'm so happy I don't live there. That is how I described it to you. Not that I'm necessarily tired, but I'm just happy that we're not there anymore. I'm happy to be back home. And I'm happy to report that after coming so close and being thwarted by Kevin Maples in Grand Finals a month and a half ago, Junebug finally did it. A 100-plus entrant event, Xanadu Legends, the 500 edition, out there in, I think this was at Laurel Park Raceway down in, uh, down in Maryland. I want to keep wanting to say Baltimore, but that's Laurel, Maryland. Junebug winning xanadu legends the 500 edition all with donkey kong so when you when you have the dk renaissance hopefully you get some dubs and we've had deep bracket runs we've had some nice losers sets and then of course people like wrangler taking left into the absolute limit and then forcing a character change which is scuffy although from Leffen's perspective i understand it but still not honorable imo anyway Junebug actually takes one, and yes, Kevin Maples was not there, but who cares? Because Junebug, first of all, to start off semis, starts off with a matchup versus Malachi versus Peach, and that's not always super fun. And yet, Junebug 3 0s Malachi. And then in winner's final, comes up against Crike, and yes, theoretically, Dawson would have been a more interesting matchup coming up to winner's finals on the other side of winner's, winner's semis, but it's Crike taking Junebug. Only to game four. It's a 3-1 in June Bug's favor. And then June Bug 3-1's Malachi in the grand finals run back to win this tournament with 100 plus people attending. No one could best the Donkey Kong on this day. This is a tremendous moment in Melee history. That's definitely one way to put it. Um, I, I do also want to point out there was only one space animal in the whole top eight. That was Fudge. Fudge the Falco Man, yeah, I believe. Uh, uh, from Philly area. Seventh. Yeah, so definitely a really solid player. But um, if you were going to pick a top eight for Donkey Kong to have a bad time in, it probably would be this one. Donkey Kong, usually known for just kind of blowing up zero to nothing space animals. But June had to go through a Peach, a Marth, and then a Peach again, which is, you know, from my personal experience, uh, Peach does pretty well into DK, but DK definitely can... Um, Definitely does have some stuff against Peach, and of course, uh, DK Marth actually not too bad of a matchup for uh, the Donkey Kong. Confirm um, grab kill at certain percents helps in both of those matchups, one thousand percent. Because mm -hmm. killing both of those characters would be so much, especially Peach, would be so much more difficult if you didn't have that in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, I do think uh, June did dodge a pretty large bullet, not having to face off against Dawson. But yeah. If you did watch uh, June versus Dawson in the crew battle, he took two stocks pretty pretty convincingly and unanswered when uh, they finally elected to send in Dawson after he took, like, what, 12 or 14 stocks or something dumb. Um, so, you know, June's, June's a beast. June's an absolute monster. Um, and I think this bracket is definitely one to prove it. I think uh, the the missing players like Milkman, missing players like Zane, missing players like... I guess Rishi is now in tri-state, but... Um, yeah, and, but uh, I understand what you're saying. I think Kevin yeah. Maples is the biggest Kevin threat Maples there. The biggest, yeah. Yeah. Because Kevin Maples did beat June in his last really hot run. Yep. Uh, of course, June had a fat loser's run on top of it, so definitely was... Had to, had to factor in, in getting pretty gassed up, but I think Kevin has such a an excellent reserved play style. Very seldomly will overextend into his opponent's punish game and into his opponent's... I guess uh, vanilla punish trees. So definitely a good matchup for a mid to low tier like DK uh, to that play style to go into that um, that play style. Of course, we do also want to give a shout out to um, and uh, this is in off the back of a conversation I had with um, Colorado's own DSJ talking about how top players really don't enter teams all that often. But Zane and uh, and Jorge 
winning doubles uh, with a four and O's run. So really cool to see that. Um, yeah, uh, Moist Esports own Zane actually not entering singles from what it looks like. No, entered uh, singles with Ice Climbers, which is another uh, definitely point of contention, which I think is <laughs> quite interesting. I believe Zane went Fox in teams at this event, but uh, Zane and uh, Jorge went over uh, Dougal, C. Dalla, Quiz, Professor Peen, Ryan, Eddie the Kid, and then totally Butts and Porkers. Um, so I'm going to be honest, this is a pretty uh, Mickey Mouse doubles bracket, especially given the amount of players that were there and the quality of players that were there. Um, none of the players in the top eight are in this doubles bracket now that I'm looking at it, um, which makes me a little sad. But hey, big ups to Zane for throwing his hat in the ring and playing some doubles. That's really, really cool. I like that. And I'm actually going to want to talk to if because I didn't look at the doubles bracket. I guess I should before I talk too far. I wanted to see if Peen and Quist actually played versus... Oh, there was a 3-0. Oh, I got to talk to them about that. Professor Peen and Quist are 717. They're from my region, so I'd be curious to hear their thoughts about it because a 3-0 is... That's rough! Ugh. I wish that they could do a little bit better than that. Oh, and then they exited quickly out of the loser side. Oh, you hate to see it. But that's that's still fine. A fifth place finish in doubles for my region. That'll work. I can work with that. Nobody in top eight singles. That's okay. That's okay. So you also got a chance to commentate the top six of the West Coast side of the Conduit Gaming. I want to say it has a special name for it. It was the monthly. There the monthly. monthly. Yes. Yeah. How did that go? Uh, I had a great time. I love working with Kreestab and uh, commentating with uh, Nick M. Whittier, who is an, a fellow doubles enthusiast like myself. Uh, we go back. We go pretty far back, and so it's always good to talk to Nick. It's always good to talk to Kreestab. And, um, I'm really, really excited to have opportunities uh, more in the future. It's just uh, it's such a good time. Uh, we had... Um, I was exposed to uh, a new player named BZ from Saskatchewan in Canada. Very, very talented Marth player, specifically against Floaties. Uh, has a win over Two Saint, if I remember correctly, as well as uh, ended up taking the game, the set, or I'm sorry, the tournament in second, but uh, Omar, the California Sheik, ended up taking it all the way through, even with the presence of Eddie Mexico and, um, and Ultra, aka Acid, who has... A bunch of um, who's a local Colorado Fox uh, from the Colorado Springs area um, and has amazing online wins, um, even as high as Plup. So those two players I thought were shoe wins for our top two. But Omar and BZ ended up taking a pretty deep run. And uh, congratulations to Omar for winning the Conduit Gaming April Monthly. I love that. And it's cool to hear that there are... Some, some, some. I, I always like hearing that there's different players who you would say, oh, well, they must be good against this subset of characters. Marths are supposed to be good against Spaceys in particular, Fast Fallers, because Marth kind of eats Fast Fallers for breakfast on the punish. But hearing that they can take on floaties, I like that. So we have buried the lead. Let's unbury it. Let's get into this. Yeah. You know, I, like everyone else, thought this is a net good for the smash community but including the melee community because i thought well of course we're part of this whole thing too when the fresh cut and had hungrybox become their chief smash officer and they roll out the freshman program they're trying to fly these people out who get voted in by social media popularity it's a voting contest like vote in your favorite player and then if they go far enough in the voting process we will fly them out to an event that's great i'm all for that that's a net good for what we're trying to do here in terms of this day and age not a lot of money coming into smash here's 100k all right let's put it to work except all eight of the top eight finalists for the first round of the freshman program are all ultimate players who according to uh, several people from fresh cut and Hungerbox himself have all said yeah they were the ones who were mentioned the most in the original announcement underneath like they needed to be mentioned or whatever added in the in the replies but first of all i counted triff's mentions and ads in the in the comments and i saw more of triff than i feel like anybody else and then triff's quote retweet 
got over 100 retweets and I'm big time mad because I think there was a lot of overwhelming support for Triff. There was a nice amount of support for B-Bats. Then, and there was, um, I want to say React Tech Chase, the tag of somebody that's up in the upper upstate New York region where J. Mook hails from, got a lot of mentions in the replies as well. And so if all these people did legitimately win, I, I just I just want to see the proof. I want to see the numbers. I haven't seen any numbers. I've just gotten a bunch of people saying, oh, trust us, bro. We we, we counted. Mm-hmm. I, I can't see the Twitter algorithm as well as these other people. But what I will say at the very least, if it's 100% true that eight ultimate players got mentioned the most according to the, the rules that they laid out, then what what... What are we doing? Why are we letting ultimate kids who are on a an old, excuse me, an old platform, if they beat us out on TikTok, I would understand. If they beat us out on, is there something newer than TikTok? But this is Twitter. Twitter's been around since 2007 or something. And 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 some of these kids were not even born in 2007, and they're beating us out. This is these are the things that I need you, the old heads at home, to consider. Oh, it's the Zoomers. Oh, it's all the old kids. No, this is Twitter. Why are we losing on Twitter? And I want to not go, I don't want to stray too far into it's us versus them. But the fact that there's not a single melee player here uh, lit a fire under me at the very least. I I told everybody in in my 717 region, I, I want to let you know that we back up like like that gif. I'm I'm telling everybody in my region we are going to get one of us into the final voting phase. Uh, the consequences uh, be damned. So that that's my perspective. Hada, your perspective, please. It's you know the 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 problem with having a I guess a competition or a voting section when you're involving the entire community, ultimate and melee combined is. Ultimate's player base dwarfs melees by a lot in just sheer numbers. The accessibility that it's on a modern console, uh, the accessibility that they're online, you know, kind of comes prepackaged. Um, they, you know, you didn't have to go and buy a CRT, you didn't have to find an ISO, you didn't have to go and buy an archaic GameCube controller or wait and buy a box. Like, it's the barrier of entry for Ultimate as opposed to melee is a lot lower. There are so many more like Owen tours, pot fillers in Ultimate than there ever were will be for melee, and that's been like that since Smash Four. Um, what is interesting about this is is Hungrybox had to have known that, and the people running this had to have known that, and I didn't know if it had to be, you know, a percentage of the vote or if it had to be, you know, a bulk of. You know, like you said, the second time around, there's going to be four melee and four ultimate very likely. But, you know, I see it from the ultimate player's perspective that, like, they want their players to be recognized as well. And if they're getting 5,000 mentions for their sixth best, their sixth most mentioned player, and we're only getting 2,000 for Triff or B-Bats or something, you know, yes, that's still good numbers, but they still dwarf it by 4K. Um, And I would still feel a little jipped by that if I was an ultimate player. So I, I see both sides of the coin. I think the issue of this is is Hungrybox is just trying to keep it as French vanilla plain Jane as possible to avoid unnecessary controversy. Um, but I, you know, I wish he would use his platform, dig his heels in, and really advocate for the melee community. Because we said it last week, there are so many players who are super willing and super deserving of slots and, and opportunities like this, not just here in the United States with players like B-Bats or that um, upstate New York uh, chic main, but we also have players, like I said, like Shiny Rhydon in the Middle East, who's an outrageous Mars player. We have um, the rank one Falco player coming out of Korea. We have Inogen coming out from Japan. And like we saw, and I think it, which is very refreshing, um, in the ultimate top eight list is they're all from all over the world. We have Germany, USA, Brazil, Chile, Ireland, USA, England, and the Netherlands. So this is, I'm assuming, a lot of regional pride and a lot of regional support specifically behind all of these players. And I would hope that, you know, all of the, I don't know how many Middle East Smash players there are, but I hope they would all come in back shiny right. And I would hope all the Japanese players would back um, Inogen. And I'd hope, you know, all of the, 
all the girls and the gays and all the melee players here in the United States would go go to bat for VBAT, stuff like that. And I think that's something that's really uh, refreshing and inspiring that we can kind of have that regional pride again. We can definitely, like, have a campaign. We can pull our support for our favorite players and see our young and talented players succeed who otherwise monetarily wouldn't be able to. The last thing that I will concede is that Hungrybox was, is, is in Japan right now, and on Tuesday was supposed to be the next Melee coin box, and instead of saying, hey, look, we're just going to keep the 3K and whatever with it, they're actually just adding it on to the next Melee coin box. So instead of a $3,000 prize pool, it's a $6,000 prize pool, and the money's still green. So mm -hmm. for Hungrybox, I don't want to come off as too ungrateful or or that um that that he is actively harming the melee community cuz i would not describe it as actively harming the melee community but i'm still big mad so i think that's it i think i'm good let's see what yeah. else do we got here hada because in terms of like, say go one ahead one last uh one last little passing thought is mm. melee is and this has been said not just in the smash community not just in the fc community but against esports across the globe I was listening to a League of Legends podcast, and um, it was a face check with I Will Dominate, LS, and Digon, who are very big League of Legends personalities. And LS, who is an analyst who is originally a StarCraft pro here in the United States, moved to Korea to pursue his career off of maybe $300 in his back pocket, and is now a huge League of Legends content creator and analyst and coach. Um, he is also a very big Super Smash Bros. Melee fan. He has been for a long time, and he will constantly reference the game. And he said that, you know, Melee, like StarCraft and, um, and Brood War, um, are games that, you know, don't see developer intervention, don't see patches, don't see changes, but the players are so passionate and the players are so talented and devoted to the game that these games will never die. As long as there is passion, as long as there is drive to be the best player in the world, uh, the game will continue and the game will still thrive. And I think that, you know, as much as we would love to say, oh, Melee's dying, Smash Ultimate's absorbing us, uh, the numbers aren't there anymore. The numbers are there. The numbers will always be there. And we are an immortal game. And, you know, as much as I would love Hungrybox to continue to push, 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 push the envelope, I am... Um, this is a situation where I feel like we don't need it, but we would definitely like it is the thing and we've had so many situations like this in melee's history in the past where we could have been on the front page of twitch we could have the tier one sponsors we could have these amazing streaming deals but then we rally we pull ourselves up by our bootstraps we start digging a hole in the sand and we have opportunities like we did with bts and papa john's and we have opportunities like we did with monster and juvie and um and all these amazing brands and uh, partnerships moving forward so i i'm not ashamed and i'm not mad about the situation um but i'll say it like this and i think this is i can uh, echo mango's sentiment when he was on the the casting couch for the valorant champions league tournament with cloud nine this past week and he was there supporting the c9 team uh one of the casters asked him you know you, you know being in a studio and being in the riot games arena how is this different from being in that big convention center and being on stage and you know, playing in Smash Tournament, he'd, Mango goes, well, five minutes into being here, a ride employee came and asked me if I wanted something to drink and, and something to eat, and they gave me a Red Bull and a burger, and that's more that, um, and then Riot's already done, more than Nintendo's done in my whole career. And so I guess that's just a sentiment that proves, as funny as it is, that, you know, in, in five minutes, Riot Games has dwarfed the amount of aid that they have given our best player and one of our biggest spokesmen in his whole career and five and with a burger and a soda. Um, but I think that it really proves to the grit and to the energy that the Melee community can give back to itself that we will always thrive and we will always find a way to succeed. That is correct. Like I said, we're going to try to get... I mean, our best players are Professor Peen and Quist, who did fifth place at a regional in doubles. But if I can get one of them oh, into a tournament that Hungrybox has to actually be aware of this, one of those two players' existence, oh, nothing would bring me more joy. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and get into our match for today. I just need to throw in Meloverlay, Meloverlay. You get it to, for the music. Put in the music. 
<laughs> yes. And I need to check the audio level and change us to the other screen as well. Audio level's good. And here we go. Let me. I'm gonna search for you now. You're chic today. Bring it on. Oh. Are you doing great? <laughs> nice <fun> <laughs> we readjusted the microphone. Man, Brawl just had some amazing music. Okay, yeah, I'm ready. Got a build? Yep. Good luck, have fun. Good luck, have fun.
What about? Here we go. Oh, can we go back to the outfield? Sure. Versus Sheik. Ready?
versus Sheik. Thank you. 
God, I don't want to win. <laughs> <laughs> GG's. GG's. Bug finals? Uh, yeah. Let me figure something out. Uh, We're the, we are the royalty of disconnecting and reconnecting right away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what am I playing? Let's do this. Ooh. Approaching there bad. It's tough though. Mm. It just feels like it's so good, but it's really bad. Is the problem? All right, I'll do one more. One more, one more. One more, one more. Oh, the dock. The hidden, the hidden demon. Yeah. Oh. I'm just dead. <laughs> That is the next part of Yoshi's. For me, anyway. Well, now there was a jump in there. Come on, now. was was an idea is one of the ideas of all time frick that was supposed to be a jump uh how to grab jump back here jump back here you know what they say i'm just too fast frick Why did I always remove this land 
and shield. Alright, GG's. GG's. I will see you next week. Hopefully you'll be feeling better, Hada. But regardless of how sick Hada is, at hey Hada for all socials and Twitch. That's where you can engage, no matter the time and weather, because if Hada doesn't want to respond back to a message or a comment right away, Hada will get back to you, okay? It's all good. I and am a, I'm pretty responsive. Also, check out my new comma video. Yes, uh, yes, yes. It is out, and I think it is pretty good. Shout out to Kickflip for um, the editing job. Absolute fucking beast. Free um, antivirus software, guaranteed. Yes, antivirus 2023 a SSBM combo video. Um, it's pretty dope. I need to add credit to the bio or whatever uh, description. Um, I need to do that. So I'll do that in a second. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, drink water. Uh, follow BSM Pod on Twitch and Twitter. Uh, follow Jesse, of course, at Cypher 003. Um, and we will see you next week. Next week, y'all. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>